Hey everyone, welcome back to the Salt and Light channel. This is Kathy. It's so good to be with each of you again this evening. And to all of my subscribers, old and new, thank you so much for being here. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing. I appreciate you praying for me in the channel. And I appreciate your comments because that lets me know where it's reaching, but also where it's ministering to you. So you guys are a wonderful part of this awesome family. So thank you. Thank you. I'm coming to you with another word from the Lord. And it is a kingdom spouse marriage, but it's also about your personal life and things that you might be going through. And it's taken a while. So the title of the message is it's taking a little time or it needs a little time and the song that god gave me to go with it he gave it to me last night is called takes a little time by amy grant so we'll go over the song at the end and as i was reading and studying for uh this message basically what i heard the lord say is um to have patience because whatever you're going through whether it's financial, whether it's waiting on your kingdom spouse, waiting on your marriage to be restored, waiting on a contract to come through, waiting on the closing of your house, waiting on the sale of a house. Maybe you're having to move abroad or you have uh, children that's moving to the States for college. There's so many things that are at play here and we're all in a, a position of patience and waiting. And the reason why is because the Lord is doing a lot behind the scenes, but he's also has the angels, as I'm seeing, going before you and before me and everyone fighting and clearing a path. Remember in the book of Daniel in chapter 10 when Daniel said, um, when the angel came to Daniel and said, hey, I, from the first day you started to pray, and that's a word right now, from the moment you started to pray, the, the Lord heard your cry and God sent me for your words. Your words are very important. Your prayers are very important. And if you're speaking the word of God over your situation or you're speaking what the solution is, then the angels have something to move with. But if you're just speaking the situation and the problem, you're giving more life to it. Because, um, you know, the Bible says that the power of life and death is in the tongue and we will eat the fruit thereof. So when we look at our life and where it is, a lot of it has to do with the fruit of what we've been speaking out of our mouth for the past few months and years. But it's also about your perspective. And one of the purposes of my ministry is to get you focused on the Lord and His Word and how great and mighty He is. And that there is uh, nothing impossible with Him. That's one of my favorite scriptures that I have lived by is Luke one thirty seven. And it says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And I remember the first time I read that, you know, anytime God speaks a scripture to me, I just take it and run with it. And I'm like a bulldog. I'll never let go of it. And that's what you've got to do is have bulldog faith to hold on to the promises of God. So that's Luke 1, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And he said nothing. He didn't just name specific things. He said nothing. And the other scripture, he just gave me that one, but the other one he gave me was Jeremiah 32, 27. Is there anything hard for me, says the Lord? He says, behold, and remember in one of the other videos, behold means look or pay attention. So behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh, and is there anything too hard for me? Is my arm shortened that it cannot save? That situation that you're facing right now, it is not too hard for God. It is not too hard. It's all about timing. It's all about your faith, giving the angels wings. And, you know, because Hebrews 11, 6 says it is impossible to please him without faith. So if you want to see the hand of God move, begin to send your faith up to him and say, I believe it, Lord. I may not understand it, but I, I do believe it, Lord, and I believe your word. I have said that since I started my faith walk, even when I didn't even know what was going on. But the more I spoke it, the more it became alive and more real in my life. It started to produce in my life. When I spoke the scriptures that um, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus and I'm the head and not the tail, I'm above and not beneath. I lend to many nations and I don't borrow. That's Deuteronomy 28. If you'll get in the Word and you speak that over your life, you're going to start seeing, seeing it happen in your life. 
because God watches over his word to perform it. Not, oh, I'm so sick and I'm never going to get through this and I'm never going to get out of debt and I'm never this. Never is, is a tool. It's a word of doubt. Excuse me. And that comes from the enemy. So uh, the scripture he gave me to start with is um, James 1, 4 through 8. But I also want to give you... I press toward the mark or the goal for the prize of the high or upward calling of God in Jesus Christ. Anything worth having in life is going to take pressing. It's going to take a goal. It's going to take a vision. It's going to take standing and being consistent. See, consistency is very hard for a lot of people because that means you have to train your flesh to get up and do what it doesn't want to do. An example, you know, I'm self, I, I work for myself. But I could just as easily say, I don't feel like going in today. But I train myself to work like I'm working for someone else. And I am. I am working for Jesus Christ. He's my boss. He's my employer. So you need to start looking at your life. And, your, you know, my ministry is part of my calling. And Jesus is my, my boss, my employer. And when you change perspective on who you're doing it for, you know, what is it he says? And I'll look this up. Whatever your hand finds to do. Do it as unto the Lord and not unto men. Whatever you're doing as a born-again Christian, you're doing it for the Lord and not for people. Yes, you're doing it to do what your boss wants you to do, but you're working and serving Jesus because he has placed you there. So when you change your perspective of who you're really working for, that's going to change your work ethic. It's going to change how you move and how you get up and, you know, and go into your day because it really changed me. I remember when I first read that scripture and I said, oh, my God. I'm working for you, Lord, always, and you are the best boss there is, and he is. He is the best employer, and he pays top notch, and he gives you all the benefits because Psalm 103 says he daily loads us with benefits. Now, have I had battles and struggles? Absolutely, more than what I've ever talked about, but that was a way for him to teach me to trust him. And to send the ravens to feed me like he did um, Elijah. Because God wants us to the point where we are totally dependent on him. And then when we get to that place that nothing takes his place, then he gives us everything we could ever imagine. So, uh, James 1, 4 through 8 says, So let it grow. Um, well, I'll do the uh, King James first and then the New Living Translation. It says, But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally or freely. Gives a lot, just gives it willingly. All right, so James 1, 4 through 8 in the New Living Translation is talking about patience. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with a divided loyalty. And that word divided loyalty, it also means double-minded. You're committed over here, but yet you're not totally sure, so you're committed over here. And I might just better commit to this in case this doesn't work out. Give your loyalty to him and the place he has called you to. And you'll know because you'll have peace and you'll prosper there. Be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver mm -mm, mm -mm, back and forth, kind of like a seesaw. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. So, who wants to be unstable? Not me. Who wants to be divided? Not undivided. Uh, divided between this one and this one. Not me. You know, he. It goes back to the video that I put out of about a week or two ago about let your yes be yes and let your no be no about your communication. You know, when when God calls you by name, your answer should be yes. Say it right now, Jesus, you have my yes. I do, Jesus, you have my yes. Well, I'll get around to it whenever I, you know, I finish playing over here. You're missing out. And the longer you're disobedient to the Lord, 
the, the longer you're missing out on his purpose and his blessing for you. And you're missing out on so much greatness that you can't even see. And I know sometimes you just need help. You need encouraging. You need to be kind of scooted along. And maybe you don't understand and you don't have wisdom as to what's going on. And getting back to the kingdom spouse part of this, you've been waiting a long time for your kingdom spouse, either to come make for him to make you his wife or her, to show up for you to make her your wife, your rib. And the song, it, it says it takes a little time sometimes to turn the Titanic back around. Well, rest in peace. This was the month, uh, I think it's April 14th, you, you know, when the Titanic sank. And of course we know it didn't completely finish its voyage, but it did sail and it was a huge, huge, huge ship and it was massive. And it, they should have turned it sooner, way, way down the, you know, the ocean before they did to keep from hitting the iceberg because something that big takes a while to turn. And that's what God is saying. Whatever is going on in your life, it has taken a while for him to work on it and turn it. Now, can he do it in an instant? Yes. But there's a purpose and a plan and a lesson that he wants us to learn. Because it's always preparation for what's coming down the road and what he's going to use us in. Or, you know, you may be babysitting right now and you're just tired of it. But who knows, God might hire you to be a director of a daycare down the road. And you're getting experience right now. So, let patience have her perfect work. And I notice it says her perfect work, just like wisdom is called female. But, um so that you may be perfect, entire, and wanting nothing. And then, if any of you lack wisdom, ask God. So wherever you're at in your life, every day say, Lord, give me wisdom for today. I do. I wake up, I say, you know, look, Jesus, I commit this day to you. Give me wisdom for the day. You know, whoever you want me to talk to, bring them across my path, whoever you don't or you just want me to love on. And sometimes he'll just tell me, like today, he just told me to rest. I kept hearing him say, you need to rest, sit still. Because I was wanting to go out and do some things. I did go get my hair trimmed, but I wanted to go out and do some other things. And I heard him say, rest. So follow his leadings and his guidance. And if I had have been, would have been out doing what I wanted to do, I would have missed an important um, DM I got and a text from someone in New Mexico that we started talking about the Lord. And it was, it was basically just a post I put on Instagram for um, a pastor who is, um, it had to do with uh, the bishop who got stabbed or attacked or something. And I just gave the scripture, you know, blessed be the Lord our God who teaches my hands. Blessed be the Lord my God and my strength and my rock who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. That's Psalm 144.1. I put that on there and he posted it on his video, his short on on you know, national everything. That's the word of God being exalted, not me. But if I would have been out, I would have missed that opportunity and miss ministering and sharing with someone in New Mexico who I believe has God, God has put together as a divine connection. So the little unctions that you get from God, be patient and give it time. Don't rush it because the devil will get behind you and say, you need to hurry up. You need to go find you a man or you need to go find you a woman. You're getting old. Your your biological clock is ticking. You need to hurry up and buy that. There might not be any tomorrow. You got to have that purse because that's the last one. When I feel like I'm being rushed and pushed by people or by the enemy, that's my cue to back up. And I'm like, well, if you just want to go on around me, go ahead. But you know what? God's probably got a better purse for you. He's got a better um, position or someone for you to talk to. So, the Lord sees that it's taken a little time to get this done. But remember, he's not in our time frame. He's outside of man's time. And he's working everything out for your good. That's Romans 8, 28. The Lord works everything for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. Not for the bad, but for the good. And he's always good. So, um... Don't be the person who wavers with divided loyalty or gets frustrated and says, Well, I've had people message me, and I understand how this feels. I've, I've felt it before, but they're like, 
I'm just tired of waiting, Kathy. I don't know why it's taking so long. Apparently, I must be doing something wrong. I said, well, maybe you're doing something right. And the Lord is just waiting on you to grow up and mature and that wisdom of patience. You know, that's one of the fruits of the Spirit. And patience is connected to long suffering, long suffering. That means your faith is being developed because God wants us to be so strong in, in our faith. I'm not saying we don't have our emotional times, but we get right back up, like, like some of the words of this song, because he doesn't want us being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, like, like the wave here. You know, he said in the last days there would be a lot of false doctrines, a lot of false teaching, people giving heed to seducing spirits. And what does it mean to be seduced? It's kind of like, you know, you're enchanted and you're under the, the spell of the enemy. You know, oh, well, that sounds good. And, you know, that doesn't require a whole lot of sacrifice or me being obedient. That's not God. That's a doctrine of a devil. The Lord, you got to know something. The Lord will never lead you away from his word. If, if you have someone in your life that's leading you away from God, the Lord did not put them there. It's a distraction or a counterfeit sent by the enemy. Now, you can still love them and pray for them and be nice to them, but you should not keep company with people that pull you away from God because they're just going to keep pulling you way down the road, and your flesh will want it. So that's a word for somebody right now that's going through a battle. You're straddling. And you know where you're supposed to be. And you have your parents and grandparents who've been advising you and telling you what, what you should do. And they've been praying for you because they don't want to see you fall. They don't want to see you hurt. So it's time to stop being lukewarm. You need to either be cold or hot, one or the other. Because Jesus said if you're not, he'll spew you out or spit you out of his mouth. In other words, I'm not, I'm just going to, I don't have time for this. I want people that are on fire for me or their eyes cold. And I can still reach them. But the, the lukewarm people are kind of the ones that play around. And you know how it is when you get around people that play around with you and they think it's funny and it hurts you or it aggravates you. You get tired of it after a while. You may still love them, but, you know, they'll say stop playing around or stop playing or people that aggravate you. Well, imagine how the Lord feels when he thinks about his sacrifice on the cross and people aren't taking it seriously. Or I've seen videos where they're kicking Bibles around or they're... Um, and knocking over crosses and things like that. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord is love and he'll give them space to repent. But when he starts dealing with them, they're going to know it. And they're going to see that he is real and he is alive. So, you know, and that, that has to grieve him, hurt him. I would never want to hurt him. And, I mean, we're human, but I, I try hard not to to do things that I know that would grieve the Holy Spirit. And, and the way you do it is you just be led by the Spirit. Just wait for Him to lead you. And that takes a lot of work to crucify your flesh, to wait on the Spirit of the Lord. Because if you're not hearing anything, you might want to just go jump into something. Like, well, I know He loves me, and I know one day we're going to get married, so I'll just go spend the night over there. But we're not married. Don't do it. Why have, what is it, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? They're, they're having their cake and eat it, too. And it's like I heard, um, was it Christy Jesse says, really good. If he can't lead you to the altar, then he shouldn't lead you to the bedroom. That means he doesn't really respect you. He doesn't really plan to marry you. Because a man that honors and respects you will honor your wishes. And he will honor what God says. So, and if he doesn't know, <laughs> give it to the Lord and, and tell him, this is, this is what the Lord wants and this is the way I want to do it. And if he agrees then God's working with him, and he can. But just be sure you're equally yoked, okay? So remember the Lord says, Is anything too hard for me? Behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? That's Jeremiah 32, 27. And Luke 1, 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. So that situation that looks hard for you, and I've had things that's looked hard for me, but I still said, God, I know you're going to bring me through this. Look at the things. That, this is how I do it, too. I look at the things of my past that God has brought me through that were just impossible with man. People, there's no way I could have done it. People could have done it. Go back and think about all the things the Lord's delivered you from. Because he's done something for you. Everybody, he's in some of you, he's done more than once. 
because of his great love and his mercy. And when you think about that, then you're saying, this is not too hard for you, Lord. You've just got another way you're going to do it. And it gets to the point where you get excited sometimes, like, I can't wait to see what he's going to do and how he's going to provide for this. So that's where your faith starts growing and you trust him as your father, your husband, your Jehovah Jireh. And realize that everything's in the palm of his hands. And that takes work. It takes time to develop that faith. It takes a little time. And that's why he sent me to tell you this message and to encourage you that it's going to work. It's going to turn around. He had me give a word last night to someone in my family that in just a matter of a couple months, the Lord's going to start move, opening doors and lifting this heavy burden off of you. Because you've come just about to the end of your training. So, you know, life is training for heaven. And when we rule and reign with him, the thousand years, and I believe people's going to have positions and he's going to put you over certain things and he might put you in heaven's kitchen. Who knows? So let's go over the words to the song by Amy Grant. It takes a little time. And I encourage you to go back and listen to the song and, you know, punch it in with the lyrics and just listen to it and read it and see what the Holy Spirit shows you. Uh, it says we've had some fun wait a minute oh wait that was the stuck with you video that I uploaded last night thanks to all of you who keep commenting on these videos and telling me how it speaks to you alright here we go uh, it takes let me punch it in here get my Wi-Fi. a little time. Wi-Fi is going a little slow. Sorry. Here it is. It's been acting wonky all day. Well, here's a picture while I'm waiting on it. This is Amy Grant. She's singing the song. It takes a little time. Lyrics. Here we go. just punch in lyrics because it's not wanting to open that up here it goes it takes a little time sometimes to get your feet back on the ground it takes a little time sometimes to get the Titanic turned back around just think about the massiveness or the bigness of what has been in front of you let's call it a mountain Jesus said, speak to the mountain and tell it be removed and be cast into the sea and don't doubt in your heart and it will be done. To get the Titanic turned back around, it takes a little time sometimes, but baby, you're not going down. You just It just feels like it sometimes. So tell yourself, I'm not going down. Tell somebody in the room with you, you're not going down. <laughs> It takes more than you've got right now, but give it, give it time. It does take more than your strength. It takes God's strength and his power. And that's what he's wanting you to look to and wait on him to do it and not try to do it in your own strength. What's this walking through my door? I know I've seen that look before. Sometimes in faces on the street, sometimes in the mirror looking back at me. You can't fix this pain with money. You can't rush a weary soul. You can't sweep it under the rug, honey. It don't take a lot to know. So, yeah, also ignoring it and dealing, not dealing with it and not addressing it sometimes makes it worse. It's kind of like a, a, I hate to say, but a scab with a Band-Aid over it that never gets air. So, it takes a little time sometimes to get your feet back on the ground. It takes a little time sometimes to get the Titanic turned back around. It takes a little time sometimes, but baby, you're not going down. It takes more than you've got right now, so give it, give it time. Yeah, I'll give it time. Well, it may be over by morning. Rome wasn't built in a day. You can name that thing a thousand times, and it won't make it go away. Let me put my arms around you and hold you while you weep. That's Jesus. He's putting his arms around you right now. And me and the whole world while we weep. He's holding us through our situation. Because he said he's near to the broken heart. Broken hearted. And he saves those who are of a contrite or broken spirit or broken heart. 
So <clears throat> let me put my arms around you and hold you while you weep. We've been talking and you know what? I'm sick of this talk and it's nothing that won't keep. Sometimes when I was reading that, I heard, it's like I heard the word the Lord say, you know, quit being a dead horse in the ground. Sometimes you can talk something to death and, and it's not giving God any faith or any room. So that's kind of what it goes back to the video last night of quit telling everybody your business and quit getting every six different people's opinions because they're all going to give different opinions. The only opinion that matters is the Lord's and who your kingdom spouse is. That's who you need to, you know, keep talking to it. So she said here, um, I'm sick of this talk and it's nothing that won't keep. In other words, just let it go. Let it go to God. He'll keep it. He'll keep it in his safekeeping and in his hands. It takes a little time sometimes to get back on the ground. It takes a little time sometimes to turn the Titanic around. It takes a little time sometimes, but baby, you're not going down. It takes more than you've got right now, so give it, give it time. And then it goes into the... You know, the chorus, turn it around, baby, you're not going down. And then it says, you can't fix this pain with money. You can't rush a weary soul. You can't sweep it under the rug now, honey. It don't take a lot to know. And then it goes back into, it takes a little time to get your feet back on the ground. So what I have felt and what I see is we are at... The, the you're almost at the end of your turnaround. It's like it's almost here. And that's the word I gave to my son last night. And I've been giving that word to people. It's like it's almost here. You know, we're about to come into the fifth month of the year and five is the number of grace. You know, like the fivefold ministry, the Lord's hand is on you. And I've, I've read that four means the fourth month four is like a door, an open door. So, um, I believe that we're about to see the grace of God in our lives and the things that we've been waiting on. But he also, when he makes us wait, he's also letting, like, the bad storm pass us. He's hiding us in the cleft of the rock. But he's also showing us who we are, what's in our heart, what our character is that needs to change. He's also showing us who in our camp is not for us or who is against us and who we should let go. Because everything God does, remember Jesus said in John 15, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Every branch in me that bears fruit, I purge it or he clips back. So, you know, lean into his purging and say, Lord, purge my life. Many of you have, you've already said, Lord, I give you my life. You love him with all your heart. You have tried with everything in you, and God sees your, your heart, your struggle. He, sings, he has seen your press towards the mark of the prize. It is a prize. The high calling of God, whatever he's ordained for you to be, is a prize. And with it comes so, so much joy and peace and healing and blessings. And you may say, well, I don't really care about the blessings. Yes, you do. You want everything God has for you because it's going to not only minister to you and things that you forgot about and bring wholeness to you, but it's going to reach to other people around you. You know, everything is always twofold. It's about us, yes, but it's about the people we're going to affect for the kingdom of heaven. So lean into what he is doing in your life. And where your kingdom spouse is concerned, God's doing a work in them too. You two don't want to get together until it's the right time. When that Titanic gets turned back around or that big thing between y'all, God's going to, then when the Lord brings it to pass, then you're going to say, I'm so glad I waited. And you're going to have so much to talk about. And also, the, for those of you that are already together and you're married, and you've been going through a really hard struggle in your marriage, this word is for you. That big mountain, that big situation in your life, I speak to it to be removed and be cast into the sea. And I break every hindrance every stronghold off of you in your marriage, every wrong spirit, every wrong person in your life to be turned away and God to bring in the right people and the beauty of his presence. Because some of you are about at the point that you feel like just packing your bags and leaving and that's just what the devil wants you to do. Don't ever deliver yourself. Let the Lord deliver you. That's what he told me a long time ago when my ex wanted to leave. And the Lord said, don't deliver yourself, Kathy. In other words, don't leave. If, if I'm going to deliver you 
or if you're going to be delivered, I'm going to do it. And he did. When I said, okay, Lord, you do it. I'm not touching it. And it was within two weeks or less. So did it hurt? Oh, God, yes. And I wasn't really expecting that he would. But at the same time, I knew I was called of God. And now today we get along fine. You know, there's nothing but forgiveness. And he's, he, you know, he's, he wishes that he didn't make that, make that decision, but it's okay. We're, we're in now. That's in the past. Sometimes people need to grow up. People need to get over selfishness. People need to quit thinking the world revolves around them. It revolves around everyone. And we are to prefer people above ourselves. When you start living a life and your heart is like that, Lord, your will be done. And what can I do to serve my fellow human? You're going to have a more open and abundant and happier and peaceful life because that's where you you learn to receive is through your giving and your service because Jesus said the greatest in the kingdom will be servant of all. So get a servant's heart. Say, Lord, give me a servant's heart. Give me a fresh servant's heart, Lord. And, and just every opportunity that God gives you to serve, do it. And just watch what he does in your life. So again, this is for you and your kingdom spouse or your current marriage. It's taking a little time, but the Lord is going to go through and start pulling out the weeds. And some of you have had some, some financial battles and struggles because we know that the cost of everything has just skyrocketed and interest rates are up and it's some people's jobs have cut back to part time or they're cutting out employees and you may have been affected by this, but God's got something better for you. So just hold on and wait for him. Just say, Lord, lead me to where you want me. And he will. And if it happened to you, don't you listen to the devil saying you're a failure and you failed and you must have done something wrong. No, it could be God's God's pleased with you and he's getting you out of a poisonous and a tox, toxic atmosphere. That's what I'm hearing him say. It was a poisonous and a toxic atmosphere and I had to get you out of there. What is it? I've seen that saying on Facebook and, and YouTube and Instagram that you were removed from a table that the host was serving you poison. So take it that way. So um, I never want to end a video without giving anybody an opportunity. If this is your first time uh, coming across my channel, my name is Kathy Williams, and I'm, I'm an ordained minister but and a prophetess. But I have been through so much in my own life and, and training and I've just seen the hand of God move and there's nothing he can't do and the love that he has shown me and the love that he I feel coming through me yes I have my human side but I prefer his <laughs> um, and he wants to do that for you so thank you for being here and if you've never had a chance to accept Jesus into your heart and life to have a relationship with him to, I call it the great exchange. You exchange your heart and your humanness and sin for his righteousness and his salvation and, and his supernatural life. And if you want that, because it's beautiful and I want it every day, I want more of him. Just simply say, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. Come in my heart and save me. I believe you're the Son of God. And Jesus, I know he raised you from the dead and brought you out of that tomb with all power in your hands. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and baptize me in your fire. I thank you and I receive my salvation and my filling of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's it. You're born again. I mean, I could have even prayed a simpler prayer, but I want you to have everything from the beginning. That's not only salvation, because you have to have salvation before you get filled with the Spirit. And, you know, just and get water baptized. You know, I, I pray the Lord show you where to go to get water baptized. I don't care if it's in a church or if people are doing it at the lake or if it's in a bathtub. You just let the Holy Spirit lead you. And you'll know when it's time. Because that, water baptism is a, is a symbol of going down into the water or the grave and you're coming up a new creation the new creation in second corinthians you know what jesus was baptized he got baptized by john the baptist his own first cousin and everything jesus did we need to do it because he was doing it to obedience to his father but also to lay down his life for all of us so 
we're the only one that has our leader who died and is he's alive and he's back with more power than and we're still in the 40 days when jesus came out of the tomb after easter resurrection day 40 days he was on the earth still with his disciples and teaching them and he was eating with them because he still had not gotten his resurrected body yet he but he had his scars and he still has his scars so the 40 days ends May the 10th. So I'm, I'm looking for him every day to do something amazing or to teach us something. And he, he, never, uh, he never fails us. The devil's the liar and the failure. So uh, if you're new here and you haven't subscribed, I would welcome you to subscribe. Come on and do it. Get these words from the Lord because they're going to change your life. And if you uh, haven't subscribed and would like to, just hit the button on the right side of your screen that says it's a little bell icon click the bell and then hit all and every time I upload a video it'll come straight to your notifications and then on the left hit the little like button or the little thumbs up when you give this video a thumbs up it sends it into the YouTube algorithm and they're saying oh well, a lot of people are watching this oh my they're subscribing we got to get this video out more which means this word and this evangelism and this fire is going straight into the airwaves and wrestling against the spiritual wickedness in high places. So when you share, share it to your Facebook page, your Instagram, your TikTok, your, your ex, formerly Twitter, it's going into many places and the gospel is, is being sent to people who've never heard it and it's helping people wait for their kingdom spouse. So you are being blessed for doing the work of an evangelist and I pray that God blesses you and your your hands and your family abundantly for it um, and if you have someone that came to mind when you were watching this please please send this share it with them or put it in your groups or wherever you feel led to send it and also if this word is for you uh, get in the comments and say it t it takes a little time or I'm patient and waiting whatever you want to say and also, if you accepted Christ for the first time or you rededicated your life, just put a three in the chat and, and that'll let me know to pray for you. And I'll continue to pray God's blessing and direction over you and your deliverance and healing, not just for you, but your family and those and everything connected to you, your, your business, your ministry, your marriage, whatever. You know, I'm praying for you guys every single day. I pray for this channel every day. And if you have a comment, please feel free to leave it. I, I read your comments every day, and I'll answer you back when I can. And if the Lord gives me something to tell you, I'll be sure to tell you. But I will always acknowledge you and uh, appreciate you. So I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye.